Amazing. Hi. Can you hear me? You're muted. Okay. There you go. I can hear you. Okay, I'm not muted anymore. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. So now we, do we need to let people in? Or do I they... don't know. Did you have to let me in? No, you were there. Um, Maybe. I don't think so. I think I changed the settings so you won't have to do that. Okay, perfect. But I guess we can see what happens. Absolutely. Okay, let me pull up. <laughs> don't be nervous. You have your nervous face on. I do. You're right. I got to chill. <laughs> okay, let me pull up the Google Doc. And how are your like the question that you added to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. It just emailed me to say that you um joined on Zoom. Okay. So I guess it will just let me know, which I'm in it, yeah. so I'm not sure why it needs to know, but yeah. And we should tell people to mute themselves too. Yes. Yes. As I guess it's just going to be us talking the entire time. Yeah. I think that that's a good idea. And then eventually we can do some where, you know, people will ask us questions, but yeah. Is it, do I look like I'm in focus? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Do I? <laughs> yeah, you do. You look like 100% in focus. So I was like, I don't know if I look like I'm in focus. Yeah. Well, I'm using hotel wi-fi right now so i'm impressed it's pretty good <laughs> holiday in vibe oh yes hey that's an aesthetic get within itself did you get free breakfast brett did i didn't <laughs> i never get up in time yeah yesterday he we were driving to dc and he was like i'm just I'm just like a conti continental kind of guy or a continental breakfast kind of guy. <laughs> and I was like, are you kidding me? I'm, I'm honestly making him a shirt that says that. Like, I'm a continental breakfast kind of guy. And I'm like. <laughs> then you should have little packets of like, what do they have? Just as a little, it's like, it's like school breakfast type thing. Yeah. Little containers of cereal and stuff. Yeah. And the eggs are always weird. They're yeah. always a little sketchy. Yeah. I I eat a bagel. That's it. Grab an orange and then I'm like, well, I don't want to actually peel the orange because you have to touch it. So <laughs> Yeah. It is nice though when hotels have breakfast. It is. Especially it is. when you're like traveling for weddings too and you like don't. That's like another thing you don't have to think about. Yeah. And absolutely. If they have canola bars, then I grab like a million and just stick them in my camera bag. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes yes I'm like might as well um at least get five dollars back so yeah <laughs> I know I need to be better about bringing snacks this year or like packing mm -hmm. or just like, finding time to eat during the day and just like not relying on like the vendor meal and stuff because I feel like before I would get so annoyed and I'd be hangry and like okay why isn't my food coming yet and then I don't know, like this year, I'm not gonna like, I don't know, I'm just gonna bring all my stuff. No, I need to do the same. I used to religiously bring a water bottle and something yeah. as simple as that. I left it at a wedding and then never got another one. So <laughs> I need to do that because it is important. Like we never take care of ourselves. Yeah. So this year, this year, it's gonna change. We should do a Zoom call. We have so many ideas. We should do a Zoom call about taking care of ourselves on a wedding day. Yes. That would honestly be so helpful just for myself yeah. too, because I don't do it. And then I like pay the price like days yeah. after where I'm like, oh my God, like my shoulder hurts. Like my yeah. hand hurts, all of that kind of thing. So yeah. And especially, I don't know. I feel like since I've turned like I'm 29. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. When we would photograph weddings and we we're like 22, 23, like we would just like carry tons of gear on our backs and then just fling yeah. our bodies around the entire day and not take breaks and not sit what? down at all and it's like what we're what are we doing can't do that anymore 
I can't. I have to put my gear down. I used to wear it all on my back. I used to have two um, hold fast like cameras at my side. Yeah, I don't do that anymore. I'm like, it's too much. It's, yeah. it's way too much. I'm like, I put my stuff in a corner. I wear yeah. my three little things, and then I go <laughs> because yeah. I cannot do the rest. Because you do one camera, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. one, one digital. Because and I've got like a backup and stuff, but I never I never use it, and I just use one lens. So it just that's amazing simplifies and it's just it's honestly the weight like that's why I don't really shoot medium format that much because it kills yeah. hands yeah it really does especially like your wrists like do you where do you put all your weight in your hands when you it's terrible my fingertips yeah <laughs> your fingertips yes I need to like oh. a little bit more like like this you know yeah. and I'm like gripping it and I'm like it's you can tell like it just makes such a difference yeah. Oh my gosh, Kate joined. Yay. Yay. Um, no. Especially I don't know. I feel like I need to go to like a chiropractor or someone to like make sure that my I don't know, I just feel like my back and my arms and my entire body. Yes. Kate. <laughs> You're just chatting about um literally how hard a wedding day is on our bodies <laughs> so. I, yes it's so true I need to find like a massage therapist or something this year getting into my 30s it just like changed everything yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I turned 30 and I was like nope I can't do this anymore <laughs> like, yeah it's too much I feel Absolutely. like every Sunday we should all get together all the wedding photographers in like DC you can come from Tennessee and we should all get like a massage together and just be like <laughs> spa day yeah yes. <laughs> have you ladies ever been to spa world in like I think it's in Centerville Virginia I went with a bunch of photographers one year and it's like a Korean spa so like you get like you know like butt naked in these pools and it's amazing <laughs> and you can spend like all day there there's like Korean food there's different oh. saunas like it's a real beautiful bonding experience and it feels amazing so I'm taking notes you said spa world in Virginia yeah. yes okay. I mean it's not fancy or luxurious like it's you know no, I like that though <laughs> yeah we like that though we don't need like I don't know yeah. no I'm not that person I think it's like 30 bucks for the entire day and you can spend for 12 hours there yeah yes I'm doing it okay <laughs> Just let me know. I will be there. I'm like, I want to go multiple times this year because my body needs it. Yeah. So maybe after every wedding, we need to like raise our prices. So then we're like, okay, we're going to charge this much more because this is what yeah. we do after. <laughs> but really, seriously, health is wealth, baby. Yes. No, it really is. <laughs> we're so excited that you're here. I know. Yeah. Too. Sorry, my camera's not on. I have to look really nice tonight, so I look like absolute trash right now. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Waiting for the last possible seconds, I have to like actually put makeup on and look nice. So <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> How are you two doing? Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Currently in a Holiday Inn, so that's the vibe. Amazing. Ooh, yes. <laughs> 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 Caitlin, should we start? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, amazing. Wow. Well, okay. Do you want to introduce yourself? Okay. Um, I am Caitlin. I have been a wedding photographer for um a little over 10 years now. Um, I'm really excited to start this new journey of when we gather with Margaret. Um, it's definitely focused on community and kind of um, focusing on the pain points of the wedding industry where since I have been in it for so long, I definitely am to the point where I'm feeling that and I can feel like isolated and, you know, um, just distance from everyone because I am working from home. Um, and so we kind of wanted to get together and create um, just a space where everybody can come and learn together. There's so much more that I want to learn. There's so much that I want to share and all of that kind of thing. So we're just happy that you're here. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Margaret. I am based in DC. I've been a wedding photographer for 
I don't know, I'm 29. I photographed my first wedding in 2016. So whatever the math is on that. But we're, I'm really excited for this because, as Caitlin said, I feel very isolated in the wedding industry. I feel like as a freelancer, it's really hard to juggle so many things and figure out film. And there's just a lot of unknown questions that I want answered. And Caitlin and I just really wanted to find, like, create a community I don't know, it's kind of selfish at first because it's like we want to create a community <laughs> for ourselves, I guess. But um, today we're going to talk about, about how to balance film and digital on a wedding day. Um, and we're just going to, Kayla and I are just going to go back and forth and just talk about um, our own experiences and how we balance it at all um, based on the questions that you guys submitted um, but we'll do more. Zo the Zoom call is only going to be 30 minutes, so it's going to go to 1130. So it's going to be pretty fast. So we're going to try to give you as much information as possible. Um, but all right, Caitlin, I'm going to ask you a question. Are you ready? Yes. OK, I this is the one that I came up right before this. Um, so on a wedding day, how do you balance like film and digital, but also always thinking about like what you want as an artist but also what the planner wants mm -hmm. but also what your couple wants too and I think that's something I still struggle with every day well every time I photograph a wedding because it's like you have all these people and you have so many expectations from so many different areas like how do you how do you navigate that um, as a photographer definitely that is a great question because you have like for your planner, you want to make sure that you do a great job. So then they will keep booking you for your clients. You have that like financial and emotional pressure because they are paying you to, um, you know, produce a really great product in the end. Um, but then also yourself, you want to feel really fulfilled and you really want to feel proud and alive of all of your work. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, um, it can really be a very stressful thing, but kind of what I like to focus on is lots of communication, lots of communication with my clients, lots of communication with the planner. Um, I feel like if you can communicate up front, um, kind of the vibe that you normally provide and that you enjoy providing. Um, and so like, obviously that's through showing your portfolios, that's through showing your Instagram, that's through showing um, all of your different kind of work. So then your client knows up front. Um, and hopefully what happens is that they resonate with the work that you produce that makes you happy. Um, and that's of course the end goal. But I would say communication first and foremost, because you also want to um, like talk with them. What I like to do is say, hey, this is a collaboration um, between me and you. And mm -hmm. that is me and the client. And I'll get to the planner in a minute. Um, but I just want to make it clear to them, like we are working together to produce this. And that is kind of what makes me happy is being able to collaborate with them. And that makes me be able to do my best work. Um, and so I'm just like upfront. I even ask them, what kind of film stocks do you want? Like, do you have yeah. any preference? Because I have noticed that a lot of people that book me already know film. So I say, hey, like, do you really love like Cinestill 800 or Delta 400? Sometimes they don't really have a preference. Sometimes they'll just say, I like black and white or color more. So I shoot with that in mind. Um, and then also with um, like creating for the client, um, I definitely like have a talk with them and ask them, hey, do you like more posed? Do you like more unposed? And that also gives me a good idea of what kind of images that they are wanting to take away from this um, experience. Yeah. Then with the planner, I will do like a few calls with them as they like, let me know what's going on. I directly ask them and I say, hey, what kind of images from the day would make you happy? Um, and is there any specific details that you really are proud of? So like, for example, my last wedding that I did, um, it was very detail heavy and the client wanted tons of detail photos, but also the planner did. And so I was able to kind of work that in together. Um, which really was helpful that they both wanted those kind of things. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes the planner wants way more details and I will just let them know, Hey, I don't necessarily have time in the timeline to photograph 
everything that you want me to, um, exactly how you want me to, you know, like if you want to have someone come in, I've never had to do this, but I've heard people say, Hey, if you, if the planner wants really good details, um, that you're not able to provide on a wedding day because you don't have the time, all of that kind of thing, um, or your clients just aren't as interested, they could have a photographer come in and just yeah. photograph like the reception area, the reception space, all of that kind of thing. So, I think communication is key um, in order to create the best work for yourself, for your clients, and for the planner. Um, and then in the end, everyone kind of knows what they're going to get. And that just, that makes you feel good, makes you feel prepared. And, um, you know, I think Odyssey is just the best policy. Yeah. And I feel like for us, a lot of our clients are like artists or photographers themselves or actresses or editors or... Um, I had one client this past year and they're both like creatives. All of their friends are had film cameras with them. They're all like super creative. And on the wedding day, I was setting up the bridal party and it was probably like 20, 20 of them. So 20 humans staring at you. And I could tell that um, the couple was like not so happy with what I was doing. So I was like, okay, like what's going on? Like we don't have much time. So I went up to the couple. I was like, hey, like is something wrong? Like what would you, is there something you would prefer? And they were like, yeah, we just want a different backdrop. And I was like, okay, let's do a different backdrop and change it. So it's like, if you didn't, if I didn't go up to them and I didn't like address that situation, mm-hmm. I know it's just like opening up for collaboration, which is exactly what you said. Cause I know at the end of the day, it's like their photos and like, we do want to have creative freedom, but it's like this balance that we have to do. I mean, it would be really nice to show up on a wedding day and just do whatever the heck we wanted, <laughs> yes. but I don't know they're paying for it, paying us to do some, you know, create work. So, yeah. And, you know, there is some beauty in constraint, um, where you can kind of problem solve and you can kind of find creativity within like what feels like a constraint. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I like to do that kind of thing where it's like, um, you know, let me use just one camera to shoot this situation and see, because that's what they want, or they just want black and white. So let me shoot this and shoot this in the most creative way that I can kind of thing. And that's when ma- the magic happens. I think when you only have, like, if it's pouring on the wedding day, you're like, okay, we only have this dark room and this dark space. Let's see what we can do in two minutes. And let's see what my creative brain can do. And yes, I know, but sometimes when you have like a lot of options, it can be overwhelming because mm-hmm. you're just like, oh, there's so much to do. There's so much to play. Um. Okay. I'm gonna ask you another question. Okay. Um, how often do you feel like you're posing your couples versus like documenting on the wedding day? I love this one. Um, so again, it does go back to collaboration. It goes back to the beginning client call, um, or the potential client call that I have with everyone. And I say, what is your vision for the wedding day? Um, generally they'll say like mainly unposed. Um, it's very clear from my work that I don't do that much posing. Um, I'm not very good at it. Um, but also, I, I like to be more of a bystander than part of it, which I know like a lot of different photographers have lots of different opinions on it. I'm very introverted. So I like to kind of like stand back and photograph what's happening. So if a client asked me, I would say probably about 80% um, unposed and then 20% posed. And that part of the day would be uh, family photos those are pretty much like my non-negotiables. I really do like to do those because I feel like in the end, that's what people are going to be able to print out, like all the family members and stuff, because, and you can still obviously make them artistic and all of that kind of thing, but that is definitely a posed point of the day. Um, if they have like a wedding party, then I will kind of pose them, but kind of you know, try to make it a natural environment where, you know, they're not too stiff and uncomfortable and that kind of thing. If the clients are looking for that, then I can definitely step up my game. But thankfully, as of right now, like it is more kind of unposed. Um, And so I like to just let the day unfold as it is. And then if a client does need to be posed, so if we're in the middle of photographing just the couple um and they're really stiff what I'll do is I'll kind of send them away from me 
and I'll say like, go explore the space, like go like hold hands or like snuggle with each other. Just step away from the camera, pretend like I'm not here. And kind of, um, that kind of like loosens them up and gives them like some space to kind of breathe. Um, but that is kind of posed because I am prompting them and telling them what to do. Um, and mm -hmm. so it's kind of posing in that way where it's not, um, so stiff and so like specific and some people do love that. Um, and so it just kind of, you know, depends on what the clients are looking for. Yeah. You? Yeah. Um, I feel like as photographers, we have to be like masters of like reading body language. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that, I don't know, I feel like I can look at a person, like any random person on the street and be like, okay, your shoulders are, I don't know, you're maybe looking a little nervous because your hands are like this or your feet are like pointed towards a certain way. Um, and it's just like, it's this like weird dance that we have to do. Cause it's like, we're always reading their body language and seeing how they feel. And then like translating that to like how we pose them in a way mm -hmm. that feels natural, but like authentic to who they are. And it's, I don't know. I, I feel like when we first start photography, it's like, okay, like, I mean, I feel like we're all guilty of this. I mean, when I first start, like, one of my first engagement sessions, like, I don't know if we did this, Caitlin, like, hold hands, walk towards me, and bump hips. Like, I do I've done that, because it's like, we come up with these little cues to get people out of their comfort zone, and it's just, like, this weird dance that you have to do, and it's, I think it's just, like, curating for each couple. Yeah. Which I know is such, like, a lame answer, but. No, I mean, <laughs> it really is, like. <laughs> It's wild how much communication that we have to do with the clients in order to take photos because you want them to be open. You want them to be comfortable. Um, and so it's definitely like, it's so communication heavy and it's so like front end heavy that guides you and leads you into like good, good photos on the back end. Yeah. Um, so Margaret, let me ask you a question. Okay. okay so, um, Whenever you are shooting a wedding day, yeah, how much film do you shoot and how much digital do you shoot and kind of how do you balance all of that? Yeah, it depends on each wedding. I know that was my other answer. Um, if it's like a 10 hour wedding day, I want to say I'd probably do like 60 rolls of film, I would say is the average. Is that 120? Yeah, uh, it, for both. I would say I probably do like half 120 and half 35 because I use my contacts, my medium format, which I'm obsessed with. And then I use um, my Leica M6 for my 35 film. Um, it's just like this constant balance of, and I think I the way that I approach film and digital is photographing like my favorite moments on film so couple portraits are usually mostly on film family photos sometimes are on film I like getting candids of family portraits on film like the in-between moments but then getting like the traditional ones on digital um does that answer your question <laughs> yes yeah so about how much <laughs> <laughs> would you say you shoot an hour or does it matter? Like, um, I think it just depends on the wedding on for like an hour. I don't know, maybe like three or four, two rolls, three rolls. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Okay. We have a question. Um, yeah. how do you set up candid family moments? Ooh, um, I think it really helps to have an assistant, Mm -hmm. um, or a second photographer. I love having a second photographer there during family portraits um, because then I can just focus on the list and I can just focus on like the individual family portraits. And then my second photographer, I always tell them, hey, like watch out to see if people have stuff in their pockets, see if they have any like hair in their face. I try to tell my seconds beforehand like how I pose family portraits so like we have an understanding for that and then I have them photograph the candids 
Um, and then I'll do candidates on film too. And it's just like those, like when people pose, I feel like for any group photos, it's like when they all come together, like, especially, I know when you're photographing like a big group of people, it's like that, the motion of the people are like, I don't know, it's kind of like a wave. I don't know. Like for when they're all moving and like coming together, because then you get to see like people interacting with grandparents or people interacting with, I know, aunt and uncles, or maybe I can have my second have be on like a, on a 70 to 200 and like focus I don't know, on people individually in the portraits or something. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I found that like right after you're done taking the photo and you can say, okay, like we're done now. Then people will kind of relax, take a breath, realize yeah. they're done, and then they can be their natural selves. Yeah. And then just snap within those few seconds after as they're dispersing, yeah. you know, like give a hug, like might, you know, like just kind of snuggled together. Um, and so that, I guess, just being ready for all of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but I definitely found like the more the people, the better the candidates in the family photos, because there yeah. are so many different little interactions going on. Um, okay. Have so you, Caitlin, have you ever had to do like photograph the entire, like all the guests in one photo? Yes, in a very dark space. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. How, How did you overcome that? What did you do? How many people was it? Oh, my gosh. Like, probably 100. But it was great because the DJ did everything. They, okay. they yeah. just had everything come together because... I definitely would not have been strong enough, but I just said like everybody, like I just told the DJ to say like, everybody come on in, we're going to do a group photo. Um, and then, you know, I did the same thing where I did a, you know, quite a few pictures of everyone looking. And then I said, okay, we're good. And I kept the camera still up to my face and then had some candids and could kind of like, yeah, you know, focus on little things going on like here and there. Yeah. It's like never putting your camera down <clears throat> you know like after you take that one family photo it's like okay we're done but people get weird too because like you have you still have your camera looking at them so it's sometimes like tilting it down and then bringing it back up once they're like okay they're not taking a photo but yeah. we are kind of taking photo and then also this kind of plays into it but on I use Sony for my digital gear and I love the silent shutter that it has because especially when you're like in, in, in an intimate wedding or like a room or, um, or you're taking family portraits, like sometimes people get really triggered or they get really, when they hear that clicking noise, their like body language changes. So having that like silent camera, I know we kind of can't do that with our film camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so loud but the sound is so beautiful but I don't know that's why I love Sony because it's like you can walk in a room and just be like completely silent that and then people won't know I know it's just like getting like wearing like the invisible Harry Potter cloak I wish I could be like that on a wedding day and just like have no one see me yeah that's how I feel. That's definitely like, and it's interesting because there is so many different ways that people shoot. So some people like to really be a part of things, but mm -hmm. I like to kind of stand back a little bit just because I am such an introvert. It's like my comfort. And then yeah. I will come forward whenever I have to, but it's like, yeah. you know, I want you all to just live your day and then like me kind of photograph it. Um, we have another question. Um, it says also curious about your posing method for couples and the wedding party. I still tell mm -hmm. people to bump hips sometimes mm -hmm. when portraits have really made me feel stuck lately. Yeah. yeah. That's like the toughest part of the day, honestly. Yeah. So, so spe specifically about bridal portraits. Um, yeah. So like wedding party stuff. Okay. Yeah. So this one's really hard because <clears throat> bridal party is tricky because you want it to look cool. You want them to have fun. You want them to have a good experience and you want them to love the photos. Um, this past like two years ago, I started like doing like adding chairs to the bridal party to kind of make it look like succession vibe. Um, that could be really hard though if the space or you don't have access to chairs 
So like making sure you communicate that to the client and being like, okay, I think it's just like asking what your couples want and being like, hey, what do you want for your couple portrait or your bridal part portraits? Do you want to be standing in a straight line? Do you want to be more candid? Do you want, because it's like you want them to be candid, but you also like need to pose them mm -hmm. to get that one photo of all of them. Yeah. This year, I I make all of my clients create mood boards for me. Um, So you could, if you're stuck on that, or for, you could ask them like, hey, can you create a mood board for your couple photos? Or, hey, can you create a mood board for your, like, family or your portraits, your, your wedding party portraits? Because then you get to see, then you get to analyze that posing. Mm -hmm. And then you get to translate that into their photos how do you what do you do Caitlin so it is definitely like the toughest part um because you know sometimes you'll be dealing with like wedding party members that have like their own ideas and things like that and so it's definitely um you know a part of the day where I try to just go with the flow and mm -hmm. I try to read the room and the space if they're really wanting to um, get more like editorial pictures. And, you know, that's like something what Margaret said is like, you can find that out ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Or if they just want, um, you know, more like loose, casual photos. Um, it's definitely tough because I think that movement is key for these kind of things to not necessarily look like cheesy is to kind of have people in motion, not like, mm -hmm. you know, too much motion, like running, but maybe like, you know, I, I really do like to just have everybody kind of walk together, kind of move around, interact with one another. But, you know, it's hard because you don't want to say everybody look at each other and smile or like yeah. say a joke because that's definitely like. You get the awkward, candid. Yeah. So you know, I would say, um, yeah, definitely talk with them beforehand and just ask them what the vibe of their wedding party is. Are they more fun? Are they more silly? I mean, honestly, I still get people where they still want to pick up the groom and I'm like, that's great. Like you all do your thing. Like these are definitely pictures for you guys. Um, mm -hmm. definitely just talk with them before and see. Um, but I think like movement is key. I think also, before you like photographing them a lot in the room um and getting like the the wedding party used to you being around um so then they're already warm by the time that you are photographing them in like a more formal setting um so then they're just like oh yeah this is the photographer but you know we don't have to act weird we don't have to act different than who we are um mm -hmm. because you know she's already photographed us uh, getting ready, putting on makeup, like doing all of that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So I would say that. Um, let me see. Yeah. I think also the like studio setup too is a new thing in the wedding industry too. Like you've seen a lot of people bring like those big studio backdrops and it looks like gorgeous. One, I did that at a wedding this past year. Bring sandbags. <laughs> Don't be like me and not bring sandbags because it was a really windy wedding day and I had to use rocks at the bottom of the studio setup and also set it up before you get there too and just make sure everything works efficiently because it is a lot and it is a lot like having you, thank God I had a second photographer for like setting up a studio for that. Um, and that will also... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, go, go, go. That will give way to a vibe too. So then they'll kind of have an idea of, you know, the type of images that you're about to make. It definitely will, will give people, you know, more of your vision too, yeah. um, which is nice. Okay. So we have five minutes left, but I want to tackle this question really quick. And yeah. we also, I want to say also that we want to do a lot more of these. So, um, you know, if, if you all like this, then we definitely want to do more. We're kind of thinking about doing um, like a weekly one. So we'll, we'll keep you all posted. Mm -hmm. um, but this says, um, what did you say during the bride and groom portraits to make it unposed? Sometimes I start the bride and groom portraits and they say like, what should we do? They want it candid. They want candid photos. So it's kind of awkward. I definitely. Yeah. 
I've been there. Yeah, I feel like this is something, <laughs> especially when I feel like most of my couples are introverted too. It's just like creating that. Sp- I think at, at the end of the day, it's just like creating a good experience for them and making them do things that make them feel really comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I think it's just like leaning into like who you are as a photographer. Like there's some photographers who are like more entertainers and they're really good at like, I don't know, just like making the couple really happy and laughing. And it's just like, I think it's just digging into like who you are as a photographer. Mm-hmm. That's such a generic <laughs> response, but it definitely like that definitely makes sense. And one thing you can do is you can kind of ask them before and be like, where in your venue do you really like, like what spaces do you really feel comfortable in? Um, because we can go there and do your portraits. So then if there's already a space that's special to them, um, yeah, you can kind of start out there. You can kind of make a loop too. So then it's not like awkward, um, where, you know, you have a, a start, And then you have an end. So you can kind of tour the venue before and be like, okay, we're going to make this loop during couple portraits. So then by the time we're back, we're done. And then you kind of feel better about it too, because you're able to photograph them in the space of their venue, which probably, you know, would make them feel more comfortable um, if they're in areas that they really like. And you've already talked to them about that kind of thing. Um, But then also I would say um, definitely having them kind of focus on each other more than the photos, more than the camera. You could even ask them, you could say like, why don't you all talk about what you all are excited about, you know, today or what, you know, because normally we're shooting at the beginning of the day. So, you know, what are you most looking forward to like throughout your wedding day? If they're the type of people that would warm up with a response, then you step back you don't hear their response. They talk with each other. They get warmed up. That yeah. kind of thing. Um, where it's just like, yeah, giving them a comfortable environment, um, which, you know, honestly, sometimes couples will never be comfortable getting their picture made. I've done that plenty of times. Um, and I found that like, you know, giving them more space, um, definitely helps. Mm-hmm. So and also, you know, starting far away and then working your way in, towards them and closer to them as they get more comfortable, even with each other, like they could still feel really awkward um, just because of all the nerves and excitement. Yeah, I've definitely found that taking pictures after the wedding, like after the ceremony is way more fun than at the beginning. Mm-hmm. They've already gotten such a stressful part done and they're more like ecstatic and elated instead of nervous. So even if at the beginning of the day, they are really nervous, you still might be able to get some really candid natural photos of them after their ceremony or after they've like you know said hi to everyone at the reception and and all of that kind of thing like you can definitely get some good natural ones like that yeah like also asking them about like their story too and like finding I think that's what you said about finding location that's like meaningful um I don't know, just like finding meaning behind the photos and like creating a good experience. And I don't know when you look at their, like when they get their photos back, they're like, oh, this is when that happened. Or, hey, this photo reminds me of my grandma because there's this detail in it or something. Um, Absolutely. Kate okay, asks so- question, ask questions. I ask things like, what was your first impression of your partner? Oh, yeah. Talk about who you're really excited to see. Yeah. That's like, good. like talk about old memories. Um, And then at the end of the day, like sometimes we just like, can't control things too like I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves as photographers because we wanted them to get a really good experience but like we're only human so we have to remember that too okay we have less than a minute okay so then um (laughs) Joyce can you can you attach your Instagram handle and I will dm you the answer to this question um And then if anybody else wants to know, how do you communicate the value of film, the associated cost to couples who might not be familiar with this medium? um, Definitely let me know. We can post it on the story too. Oh, we'll do that. We'll do that. Oh, well, thank you. (laughs) This is Bye. Bye. Y'all have a good day. Thank you for joining. Happy Happy weekend. (laughs) (laughs) well we'll have the replay available if you all need it so 
Uh, Sorry, you're so awkward. <laughs> I'm just so thankful that you all are here and I really appreciate it. And 